Hello and welcome back to part three of our Legends of Mer FPS RPG series. Now, previously we've been working on our characters' movement around the map, and what we're going to be doing this time is evolving that by looking at the sprint mechanic and how we can make the sprint mechanic deplete a resource called stamina away from the character and have a little basic UI element on the screen as well, showcasing that on there for them. So let's get started and take a look at getting this started into our game. So now we've got walking, jumping, sprinting. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to work on our sprint mechanic. So at the moment we can sprint infinitely. Uh, we're going to change that. So there's a sprint bar, sprint energy, and um, it will control whether or not we can sprint or not. So let's go into our character in our first person folder. So let's just tidy up a few things here. We've got our sprint going off over here. Okay, I'm just going to put that in a comment here. Sprint. And we'll tick show bubble. Make life a little bit nicer. And in here, we're using start sprint and stop sprint. Now, start sprint, we can um, this will be used to indicate whether or not we're sprinting. So we're going to go into start sprint and we're going to create a Boolean variable called is sprinting. We'll set that to true. And similarly, on stop sprint, we want to turn that off. Okay. Uh, this is so it's easy for us to uh, check whether or not we're sprinting. Now, alongside this, we'll need to know our energy for our character. Now, what I'm going to be doing for our RPG element of this is going to be making it an attribute system, which is going to contain things like their health and stamina and strength and all the other stats that they would be associated with them. So we're going to go to our content drawer, and I'm going to go into my game folder. I'm going to create a new folder and call this one uh, Components. And open it up, and I'm going to create a new Blueprint class and choose Actor Component. And this will be our Attribute Component. And open this up. And in the variables here, we're going to have our Stamina. And that'll be a float. And we can also make our health value here too, over here. Before we forget, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our first person character and go to the component list and add onto our component list a attribute system. Component. There it is. Okay. So most of the work is going to be happening in the attribute component. We didn't know whether or not the player is sprinting. Okay. So if when we do sprint, we basically want our tribute component to be looking at the sprinting mechanic. Okay. So we want to go to our first person character and we create an event dispatcher called on sprint. And we're going to go to start sprint function and add this to that function and call it. This allows us to easily communicate to the tribute component and tell a tribute component to, hey, listen out for our uh, sprint mechanic. So on begin play on our, our tribute component, we're going to do get owner. And that's going to get whoever owns this component. So we're not using get player character because we pro probably want to use this again for enemies and other characters too in our game. So get owner, make sure we get the right one. And we're going to cast that to a first person character. And then from there, we can get the on sprint event and we can bind it. And we're going to drag down our event here. I'm just going to create event. And we're going to create a matching event called on sprinted or on sprint. Be fine. Okay, so this gets called every time we push the button. But we also want it to call when we depress the button. We want to take it to listen out for when we do stop. Now, rather than making two event dispatches for the same thing, we can make it use the same one. So what we're going to do is go to back to our first person character, go down to our event dispatch on the left here, and up top on the right, you're going to see inputs. So we'll click on inputs, and we're going to add a boolean called is sprinting. Compile that, and you need to refresh these nodes, because I don't auto-refresh. There you go. And we'll just plug my is printing boolean into there. Now, because we're using this for both stopping and starting, we want to make sure that this is also on the stop sprint and hooked up 
the same way. So now, if we go back to attribute component, sorry, if I refresh, no, we have to compile and then refresh this. Actually, let's delete it and do create matching event on sprint. And it will give you the correct signature now. We call this a signature where you see the different parameters uh, coming through and it's printing is one of those parameters. So that is now going to call that one correctly and determine whether or not we are sprinting. Now for stamina and health, we're going to set these as hard values. We're not going to be a, a, a range of zero to one, not a normalized range. That is because our character's health and their stamina is going to change. The maximum of it is going to change throughout the game as the player levels up, gets equipment, gets uh, whatever skills to increase those various stats. So because of that, we do need to know what is the max of each one. So we're going to go to the variables here and we're going to add max stamina and max health. And I'm going to set max stamina and max health here. I'm going to set max stamina here to, let's say, 500. And max health here to 800. Okay. And you just obviously want to make sure the health values are the same here too. 800 and 500. Okie dokie. So, there we go. So now we need to make a ticking timer, which will tick away the, the, the stamina our attribute has. Now, what I can actually do on this thing is on my class defaults, I can modify the tick interval into seconds. So rather than re relying on zero, which is every single frame, I can put in a tick interval here of, say, 0.5, for example, uh, or one, something like that. And it will mean that this will tick every one second. So on the tick event, this is no longer happening 60 times in a single uh, frame, a single second. Uh, we have a much slower update call, which makes it a little bit well, a lot more efficient. So on the event tick, we are going to be looking at taking our stamina. And we want to deplete this stamina if we are um, sprinting or not. So we need to know whether or not we're sprinting. So let's promote the on sprint here to a variable. It's sprinting. And stamina here, we're going to do uh subtract and the stamina we're going to drag out and do select float and plug in is spinning okay so if i was to um when i'm holding if i'm sprinting i want the stamina to deplete every one second by i don't know let's say 10 okay Whereas if I'm not sprinting, I want it to increase. So to do the increase, we're just going to put a negative in front of it. Because if you were to subtract a negative, it actually increases the number. So if I put in negative five, maybe, something like that. And we get that coming through there. And we're going to plug that into stamina. Okay. And then before we actually do plug it in stamina, we do want to clamp this value so it doesn't go below zero or above the maximum. So we're going to do clo clamp float. And the max here can be max stamina. Compile, save. Yes, yeah, so that's always running. That's always ticking away. Um, but it will change the value based upon whether or not we're sprinting, whether we're going up or down. Okay, so... That's going to happen there. And I'm going to now print string this stamina out. So print string stamina. So we can see what it's printing. And you'll notice that the tick here is a lot slower when we see the print going on. So just to make sure that's all set up correctly. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So see it says printing 500. So that's the maximum stamina I have. If I push to push print. Is it going down? If I let go, is it going up? Okay. So we need that to be a lot faster um, in going down and up. So I'm going to go down to my 
uh, values here, so that float. And this is going to be, uh, let's change this to 100. And then it'd be minus 50. So a factor of 10 each there. Okay, so here, 400, 300, 200, 100, 0. Okay, and it goes up by 50. So the way sprint mechanics typically work is that if you let the sprint bar go down to zero, your character becomes what we call exhausted, uh, which means that they won't regen their stamina straight away. So you encourage them to sort of feather your stamina and pace yourself a bit better. So in our tribute component, we are going to add an exhaustion mechanic. So the way this works is when we're clamping the float into stamina, we're going to get rid of the pinch string for a second. We're going to take the stamina here and say if this is less than or equal to zero, um, we want to be set it to be exhausted. It should be another boolean saying ex exhausted. And set that to true. Okay. If we are exhausted, we want it to not regen stamina straight away. Okay, so on the event tick here. Before we go into stamina here, we're going to check it is exhausted. I put it into a branch. And if that's false, then it will happily carry on to let you do the sprint. So we've got exhausted being set, and we're doing the condition before the exhausted. Now we need to make it so it could time out the exhausted. So we do set timer by event. And the time here is going to be uh, three seconds and we're going to drag out the event here create event and create a matching um event and we'll do this one called um clear exhaustion and that's what we're going to do is just turn that boolean off therefore opening the gate up again in our tick to allow it to regen okay so let's take a look at that in action. Actually, let's put that print string back on. So 300, 200, 100, zero. Okay, so I'm exhausted. If I let go, you'll see it's not going down or up for a few seconds. Uh, but we do want it to stop sprinting. So what we're going to do is we need to go back to our begin play. We're getting the cast to first person character. I'm just going to promote the first person character here to a variable. So we've got a reference to our characters work here. I'm just going to tidy up the pins here so it's a little bit less messy. And on the exhaustion, when it becomes true here, we're going to take the character, attempt to stop sprinting. So now I was to sprint non stop. I'm going to keep my finger held down. And you can see now it's slowed down when we hit zero. After a few seconds, it'll start regenerating back up. It's just looking at those values in the corner to test that out there. Okay. Um, Right, that's that done. Next, we need to do a little sprint bar. So a bit of the UI on the screen now. So back in my game folder, we're going to create a new UI folder. And we're going to make a very simple uh, placeholder UI. I'm not doing anything final or fancy just yet. I'm going to create a new user widget. And go W player stamina. Open this up. And I'm just going to do a canvas panel. For now, I so say this will probably change quite a bit by the time we get to the end. But right now, all we need is a canvas panel and a progress bar to test this out. So I'm going to progress bar, I'm going to anchor to the bottom center. Change the size of it. And the position. And let's rename it. So bar, stamina. Okay, so this stamina bar is going to change based upon our attribute component. 
So on our graph here, this would be only working for the player character. So in the construct, we can just use get player character. And from there, we can get component by class. And we can get the attribute component. And with that done, we can promote that to a variable. Attribute component. We then on tick are going to add in our progress bar from the left hand side here and i'm going to do set percent and the percentage is going to be from our attribute component so drag out the reference to that we're going to get stamina and get the max stamina And we'll do something called norm normalize to range. So the reason why we do normalize to range is because our uh, progress bar goes between zero and one. So we need to know what our stamina is is in relation to our max stamina. So we just do normalize to range, plug the value in the stamina. The range max will be max stamina. This will output the final result. Okay, so that's our attribute editor. Now for testing purposes, we're just going to add this to the screen using our begin play. This is going to change greatly when we get around to it. So let's just add it on begin play instead. Create widget. And play a stamina. Add. To people. Okay. So there's my stamina bar, all full. And if I hold down shift, you can see it depleting. If I let go, you can see it going back up. Now, one thing you probably will want to do is have a smoother stamina bar so it's not constantly just dripping like that. So that's because we are only updating it every one second. So what we're going to do here on the tick of this percentage is we are going to F interp 2. So F interp 2. And this will be the target value. The percentage would be the return value. The current value is going to be the, the bar's current stamina. So I just take that and get percent and plug it into the current there. Delta time will be in the tick there. And intake speed is how fast you it's move. I usually start at three and then go up and down based upon reference there. But now we've got that F in tab two, you can see the bar is now a lot smoother when depleting. Okay. And then it will pick up again. So there you go. There we've got our stamina bar working in our game and we can be exhausted from running too much. Now, it isn't perfect. There's lots of things we can tweak on it. And that is very much the case for all of the things we're working on right now. Nothing is perfect until the very end. So we're going to keep revisiting a lot of this stuff as we go. But what I'd really like to start work on next is a lot of our systems. So we're going to start off on our interaction system in the next episode so you can learn how to do that. Uh, over right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. From just $1 a month, you get access to all our videos early before anyone else. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.